Hello everyone, I'm Tavian Hunter. I'm the Library and Archive Manager of the Stuart Hall Library at Innova. I'd like to welcome you to another Behind the Display presentation, where we tell you about the different resources that you can explore at Innova Stuart Hall Library and Archives. The library has a unique and rich collection of globalized discourse on curatorial and artistic practice from creative um, practitioners from the global majority, Africa, Asia, Caribbean, Polynesia, Middle East, and very much diverse uh, Latinx perspectives also. We collect critical theory on diasporic thought and intersectional identity theory, as well as contemporary art and visual culture in Britain. For this specific presentation, I'm joined by our recent placement student, Tanya, to talk about all the things to do with fashion, and in particular, fashion theory, globalization, uh, cultural identity and art resources that you'll find within the library. So Tanya is currently uh, studying a postgraduate um, degree at the University College London in an MA for Library and Information Studies. She recently undertook a work placement at Innova in May 2023. At present, her research interests focus on the origins of library classification for genres and subgenres within popular music, but also she's a fashion enthusiast. So that, Tanya, so I'm really excited uh, to know about the resources that you selected. So please take us behind a display on fashion within the fabric of identity. Let me share my screen. Okay. Um, so yes, hi everybody. Um, my name is Tanya, and today I will be sharing with you my presentation titled Fashion Within the Fabric of Identity. Um, the purpose of my research here at Stuart Hall focused on gathering a group of materials for readers who are not only interested in fashion and the proper properties associated with the concept and topic, but also um, disciplines that are intertwined with it. So identity, globalization, gender, and culture. Um, so this is just to reiterate the purpose of my research. Um, a lot of the resources that I will mention are books, journals, and zines specifically as well. So the first book that I wanted to showcase was Fashion Theory, A Reader. Um, this book is edited by Michael Bernard and it's a collection of essays which focus on the sort of origins and inception of fashion. And um, it's suitable for readers who have a general understanding of fashion as a concept, but also for specialist readers as it has dedicated sections to particular disciplines like anthropology, sociology, um, and sort of how those disciplines intertwine with fashion and the origins of fashion itself. And so this quote is taken from page four and it says, fashion is thus defined as modern, Western, meaningful and a communicative bodily adornments or dress. It is also explained as a profoundly cultural phenomenon. Coming off of that, um, the second book that I'd like to highlight is Clothing, A Global History by Robert Ross. It includes a detailed analysis of how, in quote, Western dress came to be from Europe and later on 19th century America. Ross uses a global perspective and investigates not only the symbols, so sort of how fashion then could be seen through showcasing how people of different classes are uh, visually, but also the process of making those clothes um, and also the distribution. This can be seen from the following quote, fashion has come to be seen as synonymous with the spirit of individualism consumption characteristic of Western European industrial capitalism. And he sort of takes you on a timeline um, of this as well. And the third book, which is Consuming Fashion, Adorning the Transnational Body, edited by Anne Bruden and Sandra Neeson, draws on ethnographic knowledge. So experimental studies that connects the theory of fashion itself to actual practice and how it operates uh, within the real world. So the book explores the links between material culture, social and economic forces, personal performance um, to explain clothing choices through time and across different cultures. 
Um, from page five, this quote says, in an increasingly material world, negotiating dress codes is a nuanced art informed by shifting patterns of power and authority, play and performance, as well as gender, sexuality, class, ethnicity, and race. Um, and my next two that I wanted to highlight as well, specifically fo focuses on culture and communities and uh, specific items within these cultures. So uh, both of the books discuss the articles of fashion that matter in different countries and have different chapters related to, for example, Ecuador and um, how certain dresses are important to those communities. And in this, this quote is taken from the fabric of cultures, which says fashion is a cultural system of meanings and an ongoing process of communication. The meanings of clothes are acquired through a process of cultural mediation by which are film, photography, the internet, magazines, and individual choices. These two books in particular showcase the ways um, in which modern society sort of exchange fashion as well um, and how they are displayed within their own communities. So in terms of academic journals, this is the one that Aniva has a lot of volumes of. Um, this is Fashion Theory, the Journal of Dress, Body, and Culture. And I wanted to highlight volume seven, which is a double issue. And this issue talks about fashion and um, in 2003, Orientalism was sort of um, the term used. And in this article specifically, it talks about the Changsam, which is uh, most often seen as a longer figure fitting one piece garment with a standing collar an asymmetric left over right opening and two side slits and embellished with Chinese frog fasteners on the label and the collar. And it is um, a very symbolic article of clothing for China, for women in China. And so Robert Cavalli sort of created his own rendition in 2003 and it was displayed on the runway and Chinese residents had two emotions with it, sort of one being really prideful that Chinese fashion was making its way into luxury fashion brands and sort of um, being shown across the world, but also at the same time, the way that the dress was produced in luxury fashion was not similar as to how it is treated within um, Chinese ma manufacturing houses. And also the prints are very different in terms of color and cutout and just the overall design scheme. And so the volume discusses the spectrum of appreciation versus appropriation. And it's really applicable to um, the world today in 2023. Uh, lastly, I really wanted to highlight the zines that are a part of the Stuart Hall Library collection. And this one in particular is Pink Arab. Um, and it's created by an artist named Daphne Hagai. It includes a number of photographs of a woman wearing bright colored hijabs against sort of white and gray scenic background skyscrapers. And it explores the hyper visibility of what it means to wear a hijab and uses art and fashion as a way to showcase that to viewers. So within the zine, she's just she's wearing a number of different colors, and you sort of are hyper focused on the fact that it is the article of clothing that makes you drawn to her. Um, and uh, this quote is from the publisher, and it says, "Striking for their formal compositions." tonal qualities and distinctly contemporary interpretation of Arabic femininity, these photographs offer a very different vantage on female aesthetics and identity. The next zine that I'd like to showcase is Fashion Library Memoir Zine, not just about the cardigans and spectacles. Um, this scene was created by library staff from the London College of Fashion. It features clothing items that have significant importance to staff members, both positive and negative memories. This page itself features a photo where the contributor mentions her mother making a costume for a play. And you can also see the detail that, the, that her mother put into making the costume too. And it just showcases how sometimes, most of the time a clothing a piece of clothing is not just the item itself, it's the memories that are stored within that article of clothing and how it transcends time, not only for the individual, but also um, at large. 
Um, so in conclusion, this is just a small selection of resources that Stuart Hall Library um, has to offer and that also interested me when it came to fashion studies. I hope that this presentation gave you some inspiration to come into the library and explore the collections yourself because there are so many books that it has to offer, um, not, not just book zines as well. Um, yeah, thank you so much and thank you for taking the time to listen. Thank you so much, Tanya. I think you, you've you really showcased a wide, wide variety of um, you know fashion books and resources from different parts of the world. Um, not only just looking at female um, aesthetics, but also kind of individual um, items of clothing as well. We also have a range of uh, different books and resources in the library that touch on cloth and fabric and male fashion as well, and also the stories within um, identity that would come from different pieces of, of clothing. So thank you so much for that insightful research, and I'm really hoping that more people will come to Stuart Hall Library.